Mark, you are an expert, you are an MP, you are a City fan, a football fan. So you can give us a little bit more insight into all this. First of all, can you give us any background into this to, to, for people who don't know? And secondly, what, what is your view of the, of the, the timing theory as to, to why it all happened when it did? Right, well, <clears throat> to give you some background, um, the government commissioned um, a fan-led review uh, that they promised in 2019. And uh, I pulled out an executive summary of that review uh, off the internet today. And on the front page there, you'll see a picture of Berry Football Club. And um, really this review um, came about as a result of three things. The first thing was um, concern over the way Berry, Berry uh, had gone to the wall. Uh, a club which was founded in 1885, Black City, very old club. Um, heart and soul of the community where it was, um, major employer in the area, um, thousands of people gutted away this, this, this club had disappeared. So part of the, the, the idea of this review was to lead to this white paper that's come out, um, which will look at the governance of football more generally, because they wanted to take a holistic view of the way football was run. The second crisis, because the, the, the summary outlines three, three crises. The second crisis was the COVID-19 crisis, which again, a lot of football clubs fell into great difficulty. A lot of clubs on the continent actually went to the wall, uh, but it caused great problems in this country too. So it was COVID-19. The third thing, and really I think the straw that broke the camel's back in terms of making sure the government does something about this, is the bid for the European Super League which incensed uh, a lot of uh, clubs up and down the country. So those were the, the three background things to it. Now, this uh, fan read review was meant to feed into the government's white paper. And whilst there's only been leaks of this white paper, and I understand the speculation that the white paper will be published next week, um, we are fairly confident, I think, that um, it will lead uh, in the 90, sorry, 2024-25 season to um, an independent regulator for the governance of football. Now that <clears throat> is anathema to what I call the Red Cartel, your Man United, your Liverpools and your Arsenals. They have been controlling football in this country for a very long time. They're the major influences in the Premier League. And um, apart from the fact that they've tried to juggle the Premier League rules in the same way UEFA have tried to juggle their financial governance rules, what they don't want is um, this being done by statute and by an independent regulator, independent of the government, but also independent of the Premier League and the footballing authorities too, because they see it as treading on their toes, telling their businesses how to, to run their affairs. And of all the the big six, if we can call them that, in the Premier League. It was only City that actually supported the idea of an independent regulator. So they thought they'd be clever and they'd make an example of City by saying, well, you know, if that's the case, you know, even though they've been doing the best to jiggle the spending rules to suit themselves, who've already over decades had major investment in their clubs, um, they don't like the idea of the, the government stepping in. Uh, producing a regulator with a remit that's quite wide and um, then telling the football authorities how they should run their affairs. Now, one of the things that's quite controversial, well, there's, well, there's a few things quite controversial in the report. Um, the first thing is that um, we've had this wrangle for many, many years between the Premier League and the Football League about how much of the money should feed down through the football pyramid through the Premier League, into the Championship, and down trickle down through the rest of the clubs. Obviously, the EFL have always thought they've not got enough. The Premier League always thinks they're giving them too much. Now, what will happen with this regulator is that if there's no agreement between the Premier League and the EFL, then they've got what they call backstop provisions, which will allow the regulator to step in and dictate effectively how much of that money does go down to the smaller clubs, but it's a Championship, uh, and the other two leagues, 
they will determine that. The other thing that's very controversial is the parachute money. Now, at the moment, there are five clubs in the championship still benefiting from parachute money. And obviously, the rich prizes that the Premier League gets um, in terms of the you know, being members of the Premier League and getting an amount depending on where you finish in the Premier League. Now, apparently, 20, something like 90% 90, 90 of the prize money that's given in football, 90%, oh, well, actually, I think it's 92%, is given to those 25 clubs, the, the five that are on the parachute payment and the 20 that's in the Premier League. And the rest of the championship and the lower divisions are getting peanuts in comparison. Now, Rick Parry was formerly with the Premier League. He's now chief executive of the, um, of the Football League. Also used to be, as you know, on the board at uh, Liverpool many years ago. Um, he's battling with the Premier League to try and make sure that the Championship and other clubs further down those divisions get a bigger share. But one of the things that the clubs don't like is apart from this, this regulator telling them what they can and can't spend or how they should run the, the, the spending rules, uh, telling them how much they have to give the lower divisions as well. So that's just a flavour of what's in there. One other thing... <clears throat> Much more emphasis on fans. They're talking about giving fans a golden share. <clears throat> now, this would belong to the fans' trusts, which are set up a bit like cooperatives or mutuals. And those fans then would have say, and would, they would set up a shadow board. And those fans on that shadow board, which is monitoring obviously what the board of their club is doing, would have a say then in, if they wanted to, for example, change the colour of the shirts as Cardiff did under under TAM, or if they wanted to change the badge, or they suddenly wanted to move location, or they wanted to sell their stadium. So the fans would have a lot more say in that. And again, that's worrying many of the clubs, uh, the, the idea of this golden share, that there's a, an effective veto that fans can have in certain areas of governance. Now, at the moment, we've not seen the white paper, but these are the recommendations. The white paper will adopt some of them, I'm sure, but others it won't. But then it's got to go to parliament, you know, we'll have to debate it in the Commons and then it'll go to the Lords before it will be implemented in time, I believe, for the 2024-2025 season in the future. Do you think that's that just the gist of it. Do you, do you, with that, that's brilliant that you've just explained that. But with all that uh, as the background to it then, um, obviously the, the Premier League bring all these charges. Is, is that the Premier League then... I won't say making stuff up, but 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 you know, trying to make a point by what it's doing to try to prevent all that action. And on that basis, then, do you think that this is just flimsy and city fans can can be less concerned about it? Well, uh, first of all, I think, as I said earlier, I think it's an attempt by the Premier League to make it look as though it doesn't need regulation. It, it, it doesn't need governance. It's quite capable of making its own decisions about how they should be governed. But I think as well, by making out City to be a transgressor or some sort of renegade in terms of they've handled the governance at the club, um, they're give, trying to give the impression at least that they can look after themselves and they don't need an independent regulator sticking their nose in. So I think that's the whole basis of it, apart from the fact that they don't necessarily like cities, uh, the way City have behaved over the years. Now, I mean, like I said, I, I believe this is, as I call it, and others as well, the red cartel, just trying to look strong and macho. Uh, and we'll, they will be saying to the government and the Secretary of State for Culture, Media and Sport that we don't really need the government getting involved with this. We're quite capable of doing it ourselves. But I think certainly the the government at the moment, the Conservative government is in favour of it. We in the opposition, Labour, are in, are in favour of it. And with the exception of Liv Truss, because Johnson said he'd, he'd follow it, and Sunak has said that they will follow this and that they will most likely press for a regulator. Now, obviously, there's a whole parliamentary process to go through yet, but um, there's a good chance, as I say, that this will be published next week and then we can you know, look at the detail that's in there and uh, chew it over as it, as it goes through both houses. Who's going to win this power struggle then, Mark? And, and how's it, how is City going to come out of it, do you think? Well, from City's perspective, the fact that they want an independent regulator 
tells me that they're doing things pro properly and correctly. I mean, I can't think of any other business in the world where you can say to your competitor, I'm sorry, but you can't make that investment in your, in your company or your club. Um, now, it's one thing bringing in financial fair play to say, well, um, we, know we don't want clubs going bust like Berry or, or other clubs that can't afford it. But if you can afford it, why should you stop, stop clubs who can afford it making that investment in players to, to improve the team? Now, there's a very interesting clause in this, and I'll just fish it out uh, here because it made my eyebrows, well, it raised my eyebrows. And it's to do with the financing of football. It said under the proposed new approach, a club would be able to invest in order to seek to improve its competitive position. But this will no longer be able to be, be to, cam, to gamble with the club's future. For a club to do this, the money would need to be in the club up front and committed. Further, the reviewers concluded that, on balance due to the fragile state of club finances, if the activity of one or a few profligate clubs driven by owner subsidies are objectively assessed as being destabilizing to the long-term, sorry, long-term sustainability of the wider league in which it competes. Then the IREF, this is what they call in the regulator, the independent regulator for English, English football, should be able to block further owner injections on financial stability and proportionality grounds. Now, I don't know if this is included in the white paper and whether or not the government wants to back this. But to me, that sounds a bit of a threat to, to the likes of City and other clubs that want to make that investment to turn themselves into bigger clubs instead of the clubs that were there before the new owners took over. Um, it could be an obstacle. Um, now, that's just a suggestion that's in the, the fan-led review, but whether or not it's reflected in the white paper and whether or not the government will support it is, a, is another matter. 